Good luck, Ebele Jonathan was seen as the face of democracy in Nigeria and Africa. And why did I say so? Because he was able to accept defeat and congratulated Muhammad Buhari as the president. There were so many wide rumor or suggestion that Nigeria would come to a break. Had it been Muhammad Buhari lost that election to Jonathan in 2015, then Nigeria maybe will be thrown into serious level of chaos. That was the prediction from many uh, political scientists and public affairs analysts, quote and unquote. But then, let's look at this. The 2023 general election was one of the most fraudless elections. Now, the person who was declared as the winner of the election and affirmed by the Supreme Court and also the, even the appeal court before the Supreme Court, you know, is now charging the Independent National Electoral Commission you know, to conduct a free and fair election in the forthcoming Emo, Kogi, and Bayesha election, distributed for 11th of November, 2023. Here is uh, your president, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, while, you know, addressing the candidate of the All Progressive Congress at the State House a day ago. We are all taking the crusade for democracy, in particular, in this time of season election, and it is our hope. I must do it, I hope. <laughs> so, we believe you always come victorious. We pray God Almighty to be with you. I'm here, I like him, mobilize well, to see a stability of the country, in your heart, and in your leadership, we believe, and we believe you will do well. See, I, I don't even know, I'm like speechless, for someone who came in through Let's say back door because if you look at that election, there was nothing credible about that election. There was massive rigging, beating, and all of that. So it is not about which candidate won the election. It's about the credibility of the election. If the election is not credible, then maybe you have to conduct the election. And that is all. But then, in the forthcoming election, I'm not going to do about this, but I'm going to talk about what uh, is going on within. Um, Emo state to be precise, and the issue surrounding the deputy governor of Bayesha state. Now, the Emo state governor is talking about uh, uh, salary being paid and all of that during his last eight years of administration, and trying to justify the reason why the chairman, the national chairman of labor union, was beaten to stupor. And it's now a report that he has been flew out of the country for medical attention because of the level of beating that he received. <laughs> anyway, I will come to talk about that but probably in a subsequent video. But on this particular issue with Imo State, hear what the Imo State governor said, then I will come and conclude on this particular issue. I came to Imo State as the governor January 15, 2020. From 2020 January to date, there is no month we did not pay salary before 30th. But the situation is that before this time, I thought that the labor union is a democratic entity that allows the opinion of people. I don't pay federal civil servants. I only pay Imo state civil servants. And I challenge any Imo state civil servant to come up to say that between 2020 January 15 to date, that he did not receive salary in any of the months. What has happened is this ugly coincidence that the national chairman president of Nigerian Labor Congress is from Imo State and has not been able to demarcate the difference between being a national leader of an organization and then an interested party in local politics. But God will, will manage the situation. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I still repeat, there is no worker in Imo State. Recall that I came in January 2020. By March, I started paying minimum wage of 30000 that has been lying there that previous leadership didn't pay. By December, I paid 13th month, the first time in the history of Emo Civil Service. And I've maintained continuously this 13th month payment as an incentive. I automated the payment systems 
salaries are now re received in an automated manner in Imo State for the first time. I brought new innov innovations. I reformed the civil service. No wonder that the civil service, entire National Labor Congress of Imo State chapter, endorsed me. And I'm the only candidate that supported in the election. The pensioners, the Nigerian Union of Pensioners, endorsed me. I'm the only one. From 2007 to 2020, no civil servant in Imo State received gratuity. It's only my government that have now floated a bond to pay outstanding gratuities to civil servants. So I understand the sensitivity of this event. But I want you people to be very careful because there's an attempt to mix up partisan politics or an attempt to blackmail my government. But I can tell you that my people are already aware. That was why the Nigerian Labor Congress, Imo State Chapter, addressed the World Press Conference that what their national leadership is saying is not correct and that they are not going to do any strike or protest. And in the process, they decided to dissolve them, to put in a caretaker. Of course, I'm the chief security officer, and I have a responsibility to intervene. I encourage the national leadership not to dissolve a, a management team that their tenure has not expired. And that was what they did. I don't interfere with labor matters, but I have convinced my workers in Imo State to believe in me. Now, the Imo State governor is saying that he is the uh, chief security officer of Imo State and he needed to intervene because the state chapter had a word press conference stating that there was no any form of uh, issues in the state that will warrant them go into any form of protest or even going on strike. So there is no need. But the national chairman went there to do protest because he's interested in the state politics, according to him. Now, they have beaten a young man up, arrested a young man, and do you really need to beat him up? Because from what he actually said, he meant uh, like he actually took that action. He did what happened to the uh, national chairman of labor union. So he was not beaten by thugs. He was beaten by people, you know, uh, sent by the governor. Because he said the ugly incident uh, by, you know, that happened, it was because he was interested in this thing. And he is the, uh, the, the, the chief security of the state, and he has to intervene. So what is the intervention there? Let's underline that statement. He has to intervene. Intervene in what capacity? Is it by stopping them from protesting or by beating up the national chairman? Let's ask ourselves this simple question here. And we needed the governor of Imo State to come out clean and answer those questions as well. The issue surrounding Imo State security-wise, are you not the chief security officer of the state? Why is it that the killings, kidnapping, and all manner of things sit at home happening in Imo State? You have not been able to address it as the chief security officer of the state. But when it comes to issues surrounding uh, uh, labor union, you want to throw more, you want to show power. But then, you are not able to show power where you ought to show power. Protecting the image and the property, you know, safeguarding the property and the people in the states. You have not been able to do that. But then, you are going ahead to, you know, beat somebody up because he is he, 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 not aligned with your political interests or whatsoever. Or because you are contesting for election. This doesn't make any sense. Anyway, what do you think about this? Imo is always on the spotlight, and this started from the time Ob Ozodema became the governor of Imo State. We had Rochas Okorocha there for eight years, and what we have witnessed within the last eight years of APC in Imo State cannot be compelled to what happened in Imo State during Rochas Okorocha because Imo State was more and more peaceful as of that time to now. What changed? What happened? Hope Ozodema happened to Imo State. Thank you for watching.